能是整个安徽最大的烂尾楼群，总面积达八千多亩，超过一半的建筑都属于烂尾状态。这里因距离安徽最大的机场仅只有几公里，商人们原计划在这里打造安徽最大的空港新城，集文化旅游、商业、酒店、住宅为一体的特大综合项目，规划住宅总户数超过两万五千户，未来将有超过十万人居住在这里。而如今，隐匿的楼宇之间，并非欢声笑语，取而代之的是丛生的杂草和破败的楼房。Abandoned properties are common throughout China, reminiscent of scenes often associated with haunted houses. China's housing crisis, a nightmare. Decades of debt-fueled construction leave China with abandoned residences and near-deserted ghost cities. How many vacant homes are there now? Asked Hu Kung, the former deputy head of China's Statistics Bureau, Kung spoke at an event in the southern industrial city of Dongguan. Each expert gives a very different number, with the most extreme believing the current number of vacant homes is enough for three billion people. That estimate might be a bit much, but 1.4 billion people probably can't fill them. He added, referencing the current estimate for China's entire population. Hu Kong said there could be enough vacant homes in China to house up to three billion people. To provide context, that's nearly tenfold the population of the U.S. Furthermore, this number is 15 times the population of Western Europe, and a staggering 140 times that of Beijing, the nation's capital city. This data is derived from official reports, considering the average home size in urban areas, which measures approximately 39 square meters or 420 square feet. Analysts consider the household size in China, which averages 2.62 individuals per dwelling, as reported by China's seventh national census conducted in 2021. Government data from August reveals that the combined area of unsold residences in China is approximately 7 billion square feet. According to Reuters, the estimate by the outlet suggests this equates to roughly 7.2 million homes, assuming an average home size of around 968 square feet or 90 square meters. Reuters noted that these figures exclude the count of homes that are sold but remain unfinished, and include properties owned by individuals who purchased houses purely for investment purposes without residing in them. However, Hu's statement, acknowledging the colossal and concerning housing surplus, contrasts the official stance of the Chinese government. Takes more action to revive the real estate sector. In March, China's central bank declared that the nation's real estate sector was experiencing a resurgence, and that recovery of market confidence has accelerated amid disconcerting data showing sluggish economic growth and dwindling consumer confidence. The government has unveiled a series of support measures for the real estate sector in recent weeks. In August, the central bank and the Financial Regulatory Authority took steps to stimulate the real estate market. Including reducing mortgage rates for first-time home buyers. Additionally, they lowered the minimum down payment requirement to 20% for first home buyers and 30% for those purchasing a second home. We see this as a key step in Beijing's reflation efforts. It's a positive surprise for the market, given the fading hopes on easing since mid-August. Morgan Stanley analysts said in a client note. Recently, regulatory authorities made adjustments to the eligibility criteria for first home mortgages. They now consider whether buyers currently own homes at the time of application, rather than solely relying on past mortgage records. Major cities, including Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and two others, announced plans to extend preferential loan benefits to first-time home buyers, regardless of their credit history. Three Chinese cities lifted home buying bans. Dalian, Shenyang, and Nanjing. Dalian and Shenyang have declared the removal of property purchase restrictions in most city areas for buyers and tax incentives for sellers. In a similar move, Nanjing City allows property purchases without proof of eligibility in four districts, eliminating its remaining home acquisition restrictions. Over the past few years, China's real estate market has grappled with an overwhelming surplus of residential properties. The sector has been the bedrock of the country's economy, fueling a construction frenzy that has given rise to entire neighborhoods changed by tall buildings, despite being devoid of inhabitants. In many neighborhoods, homes have been sold but have yet to be completed due to construction firms facing financial constraints.
Harsh Reality Facing Poor Workers In March of this year, news surfaced about an ongoing real estate project in Xi'an, which had remained incomplete for nearly a decade. Frustrated by the prolonged wait for property delivery, one of the buyers took a stand to assert their rights. These individuals reside in rudimentary dwellings without basic amenities, such as running water and electricity. Upon inquiring about their circumstances, they said most were migrant workers from neighboring districts. In another video, the owners flocked to the district government's gate to protest because the unfinished Huahai Forest real estate project dragged on for many years. Many people were arrested there by special police in Dajo District, Dajo City, Sichuan Province, on October 7th. In Shenzhen, owners held banners to protest against unfinished buildings that were abandoned for many years in the Shenzhen Administrative Center. Police mobilized and surrounded the citizens while they protested to protect their rights and benefits. China's real estate market has been pivotal in bolstering the nation's GDP for decades. Remarkably, outstanding mortgages in China constitute a substantial 31% of its GDP, with 59% of its household assets tied up in the real estate sector. Recently, China has confronted challenges such as deflation, escalating youth unemployment, and a lack of demand. Consequently, China's once booming housing market has started to exhibit fractures, putting immense pressure on its major property developers. The colossal real estate conglomerate Evergrande was the first domino to tumble, with debt defaults in 2021 amidst escalating financial woes. Evergrande incurred staggering losses of $81 billion in 2021 and 2022 combined. The agony in China's real estate sector persists unabated in the current year, as property sales plunge, leaving Evergrande's competitors uncertain. Country Garden, formerly regarded as one of China's most resilient property developers, now grapples with financial woes, casting a shadow of doubt over the destiny of colossal undertakings like Malaysia's Forest City. Country Garden had an impending obligation to disburse $66.8 million in coupon payments for its 2024 and 2026 dollar bonds, with the provision of a 30-day grace period. However, the developer confronts a substantial challenge in the coming week. Failure to meet a $15 million coupon due by October 17th could trigger a default on its entire offshore debt. Country Garden has $10.96 billion of offshore bonds and $5.81 billion worth of loans not denominated in yuan. The company would likely be compelled to undergo debt restructuring if it defaults. A Bank of America research team, led by China and Asia economist Miao Ouyang, said that a confluence of factors, including years of excessive construction and China's aging demographic, has led to a saturation of the housing market with an abundance of inventory. All the while, demand experiences a noticeable deceleration. China's housing market downturn isn't just a cyclical correction, but reflects a long-term decline in intrinsic housing demand. The key question is, what can replace the property sector as a growth engine for the Chinese economy over the medium term, if not right away? Ouyang wrote, 